like to uh, open the February 4th Southampton Village Planning Commission meeting. Uh, and we have a number of members here. Um, so thanks for attending. Sorry for the confusion with emails, et cetera. Um, I wanted to just start by kind of reviewing what we've gone over actually in December uh, and have made some progress on a couple of items and then uh, drill down onto into three things, which is the um, village business district, the, the VB district, um, some progress on the residential districts and um, some discussion around uh, entitlements and also uh, affordable housing. So a bunch of stuff, uh, some of which can, we can go through more quickly than others. Um, so we had originally talked about, uh, about topics and um, amongst them was the master plan updates, um, particularly regarding the BB district, the uh, issues of affordable housing, sewer, uh, and so on and so, so, so forth. So I wanted to start with, um, you know, I have reached out to um, some of the trustees and to some of the consultants we'd worked with um, in previous years and wanted to report on that and uh, hoping we can, we can get some of these, um, these items kind of moving in a substantial way. And I, I think overall there's, um, uh, you know, purse strings are tight with the village, so that's always hard. But I think that the uh, it would be very wise for us to be, you know, looking at some of these um, issues of development, particularly prior to uh, any potential sewer district work that may happen. You know, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but there's already, um, uh, you know, development proposals coming in. I think everyone may have seen that the um, Southampton uh, Inn has made a proposal to build a new building. Um, so I think that there's there's plenty of um, activity um, going on both both in the VB and the residential districts. So you know what I had sort of thrown out there was you know I think we should see this as an opportunity because we have people that um, are interested in making an investment in the village and I think for the most part you know want you know are excited about the future of the village and if we could uh, help in any way to make the review process um, better and to also get the best outcome both for applicants and the village. Um, I think that you know that would be a great goal. Um, so with that in mind, I'll just I'll start and, and talk a little bit about the topic one, which is the BB districts. And then we can pause and 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 you know take any questions. Um, so I had I went back and talked again to uh, James Lima uh, as a consultant, and, we, and we've had several other consultants we've spoken to. And <clears throat> regardless of, of which person, I, the proposal here is to really um, drill down on, um, on the urban design guidelines. Um, when we did the, the VB work, I think five years ago, maybe more, um, there were some, some general guidelines that were put in place. And one of the big ones was the build two line so that um, new buildings had to move to the street line. And there were some um, tweaks put in around, uh, around building height. Um, but, you know, as, as some new projects come in, particularly the larger, some of these larger lots, um, there's an opportunity to make sure that the massing um, is right and the, and the uses are, are really aligned with what the villagers like to, would like to see. Um, so the proposal is to really look harder at, um, at the actual um, design guidelines around what these buildings might be as they get built. So that's that's what I had thrown out. I'd, I've mentioned that also already to some of the trustees and I wanted to put that um, thought to the, the floor here and see if anyone else had thoughts about it. I, I think I would, uh, I would like to congratulate you for that initiative. I think that it's very, it very much deserves to be looked at. I think, uh, yeah, I think for the larger lots, definitely. I think one, uh, go ahead. The, I mean, the design guidelines, uh, I, I think, you know, if you, if you work the numbers and, and whatnot, uh, they were very cognizant about massing and making sure that the frontage was broken down. So you, even if it was a large building, it would not look like a large building, it would look like separate buildings. Uh, with different heights and, and, and whatnot. 
Uh, as far as uses, uh, I mean, when when this whole thing was passed, it, it, uh, one thing that uh, Stan really uh, focused on was not to determine uses. You really should let the market decide the uses. But I think that in terms of uh, forcing all of the buildings to come to the street line, to the sidewalk, I'm not so sure that that's such a good idea. Sometimes it's nice to have some grass or some uh, to have the building set back a little bit, especially on on the larger lots. Well, I think so I, I disagree think. completely. I disagree completely. Built the yeah, built yeah. zone, built the line. It's standard practice. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It has to be on the, you know, to the sidewalk. It, so it looks like the villas, like Main Street. It's just the, the VB Lane. district we're talking this about. This is just that. the VB district, Mark. Yes. This is not in the yeah. uh, No, no I, I think so. But for example, on, on uh, if you look at Windmill Lane, there are some buildings that are set back. There's a little bit of grass in front, or there is a bit. To me, I think it's... Uh, yeah. We have very Windmill narrow Lane sidewalks. The sidewalks are narrow. On the large so, but in, it, it, Go ahead. Mark, that's such a good example because I think Windmill Lane has such less street appeal than Job's Lane and Main Street. Right. That are okay. built to line and built to zone. Look, right. we, I think we already have a built to line in the work that we, what yes. we did five years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, no, it's in the current zoning. Yeah. yeah. I think that, are we talking about the VB? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Right now, we're just talking only about- the, the, Only the business district. Yeah. Only yes. the business district. Can, can I? Can I maybe add something? I know it goes to your second item, but I think they do fit together is, you know, when we did the village business district, we really only did design guidelines for um, Windmill and New Newton Street. Right. And so one thought is, particularly given what's happened since on Hill Street and other stuff now proposed on Hill Street, one thought would be to come up with some design guidelines for Hill Street and Hampton Road as extensions of the original, because we never really did, did that. And certainly with the movie theater of vacant and whatever happens at the Southampton Inn, it sounds, you know, it seems like one thing we could do is sort of think about from a design guideline point of view, what are those streets, what should those streets be looking like, which we that's, never that's did. A, we sort of- That's a good idea. Yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because there's some big lots that, you know, the, the theater lot and obviously the, right. um, the Southampton Inn lot, which is um, three and a half acres. And I, I uh, heard a presentation from Dee Dee actually earlier today, and she was updating. And I think you know she's she's a great example. She wants to build something really fantastic for the village, and I think probably looking for some feedback from the village to right. get to uh, the best possible project. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the problems we have in our entitlement process is that right now there's not really a you know, a high level dialogue, which kind of goes to, you know, goes through the motions of the legal aspects right. of an application, but no one steps back and says, well, what, what would be a really great solution? And I think, you know, all the work she's done is already, you know, going in the right direction. Before the planning commission and pr proposed three scenarios. And the one in the newspaper was just the one. And at the time when she came before us, there was some questions about the parking lot behind the movie theater and um, also egress from the Radian Way um, to that section. And um, when she presented to the village, it was just that she just chose the one, the one variation, um, which basically gets rid of the Radian Way, except as pedestrian. When we all reviewed it, I mean, I don't know if I'm remembering, but I thought I remembered that we did have some questions that we thought needed further study. Um, and then, and then the pandemic happened. So, yeah. um, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if if we are involved in this at all now or I not. Part of the idea is that if that we would look at those large lots, and um, you know, we I think we'd have to move relatively quickly because we have a you know an applicant right now um but i think it, it that's the whole point is that we're getting these applications and um re redeveloping these sites and you know to your point on the affordable housing side she's already made uh an unofficial you know discussion around putting some of the apartments into some kind of workforce housing and 
that in her presentation to us as well. Yeah. Right. And there's just some, um, I think there's lack of clarity around what that means, not just from her, but from the village perspective, like how would we manage that? Um, and maybe I, mean, that's I have a okay. question. Okay. She, her, her, her rendering shows on the, I guess it's the east side of Iradian Way, those long, that would be um, additional hotel space. And then above it would be workforce, some workforce. I, I got to ask a question. Are you going to, I mean, is somebody going to pay 300, 500, whatever a night and have somebody tromping around upstairs? It's, so the plan was to put the workforce housing in the, um, you know, the co commercial buildings on Hill Street? Yeah, that's what I thought too. There are second floors there. That's where she's proposing workforce housing. That's what I'm saying. If, if you go in Viridian Way, there are the commercial buildings where the, old building department was and yeah, yeah. those are the yeah, buildings yeah. That she's talking about i'm sorry those are the buildings where she's talking about putting in affordable housing exactly workforce housing yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah. question i had was more on the second floor yeah yes and the first floor would be oh. additional hotel space no no i think it's commercial yeah oh it would be commercial Office. yeah Really? Okay, so i i miss i misread it then a change of use it's just maybe a change in the who's who would live in the units. Yeah. Okay, um, well then then there's still the question of some sort of egress from Viridian Way over over to there. Or is that necessary? So I think this is the larger point. I mean I don't I don't think we have the information here to fully debate that site plan and that site specific. But the thought is that you know as there should be a comprehensive look at at the district. And there's a lot of a lot of these um, streets, particularly Windmill um, and Nugent, are don't aren't fully developed from a character point of view. And let's make sure that they, as infill comes down the road, which some of it might be soon, but some might be 20 years from now. Um, just making sure that that's um, the best quality development. So that's that was the that's the idea, and to extend the work that we already did for. Maine and Jobs to look carefully at those other streets. Well, Nugent is already included. What's this? yes? Which one's not included? Uh, just Windmill Lane. Just and, Windmill, Windmill Lane. And, and, and West and, and Sorry. No, Windmill Lane, I think, is included. Yeah. And then the other, really? you know, the so, use. Oh question. yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, maybe. When, when, I think I the whole think. All, everything around the parking lot. Yes, like, exactly. Yeah. Eduardo, yeah, the, so Windmill Lane is included too. Um, I think it was more if you, if you made that a street coming up from Windmill Lane. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. There was always some you know discussion of eventually doing that. Mm -hmm. um, well, do you want to speak I have a question. I'm sorry, Eldon, but what is her timeline? Do you know? Well, I, I'm sure I'm sure she doesn't want to wait two years for us to mull, mull it over. So <laughs> who wants to wait two years? But <laughs> you know, there's no sewer and she's so she's going to have to do her own system like and she's right next to the latch so um you know those maybe are just those are just facts maybe she'll just go into the latch and maybe they'll combine it because the latch well, that's, have a, that's a good idea if she's friendly no the latch doesn't have a system yeah they have gonna, it, do you really no the latch has very are independent uh, small uh, septic systems oh well, they do they've already installed them yeah they, yeah. they, I think they went for, with IA systems, but yeah. they didn't even have to. They so could have gone. Ask a question for Laura. I mean, I don't know if you know the answer, but if you know, if we have applicants who um, are interested in, you know, providing some of some workforce housing, um, you know, where where would that fit into our, you know, the village's ability to kind of monitor them and uh, and create a pool for people who might apply for those those units. I understood that it had to be with our staff also. It was for our staff, no? Well, yeah, and I'm sure that that's underneath this workforce is like she's probably on top of that is basically she's thinking about her staff. Yes, because she's um, in general, let's not be specific even to that, but in general. But I mean, okay, well, you can. You may have a partner. It's going to be private, quote unquote private, affordable. Uh, there are guidelines you. that you have to follow. If it's workforce, um, I don't, I'm, I mean, I'm not clear on what Southampton town has done or what East Hampton town has done. Um, 
Okay. Is there so a limit a... on workforce housing? I mean, you know, it's if if it's not if it's not affordable. Okay, affordable has its own guidelines. It has its right. own stuff. If you're if we're calling it workforce, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe somebody else knows better than I. Mike, do you have any insight on that? Yeah, <laughs> I have some. Um, so typically, perhaps the feds and the state may define affordable and workforce housing differently, but on a municipal level, they're typically interchangeable, um, especially within planning documents. Um, regarding who has oversight of them would depend on how they were created. So in certain instances, if you have a affordable housing project like in Spion Commons or in Sandy uh, Sandy Hollow, both have around, you know, in one case, 60 units, the other one, maybe it's like 40, I can't recall. Um, they, they are privately managed, but they partnered with the uh, Southampton Housing Authority, which is no, which is its own entity and nonprofit. Um, that being said, we, the town, have our housing and development uh, department, which is not necessarily partnered with them. They just collaborate and work together to pursue these projects. So that's one that's one branch. The second branch is in certain instances we have um, business develop uh, excuse me commercial development that's occurred, and we've given them um, additional yield, meaning that they can have a bigger building and um, or more units um, in exchange for affordable housing. Now. The housing authority may not be involved in this, so now it's actually the town is supposed to have um, a say here. And so that theoretically, the landlord um, would have to, when they have a tenant, have that tenant go to the town, meet with Diana Weir, who heads this department, show that they're eligible based on their income. But there are, there are, in my opinion, there are some problems with that, you know, because ultimately a landlord could just not tell their tenant to do that, do that and then also charge market rate. So uh, those are typically like the two avenues and there might be a third, I just have to think about it. Any questions? I know, I know about that, Mike, and, um, but I don't know, I guess, I guess the guideline would be, is this gonna be affordable or is this gonna be workforce? Or is there a delineation between the two? No, what you're thinking of is Section 8. Section 8 versus oh, no, affordable I'm not. versus... I am not thinking of Section no? 8. No, I'm not. Okay. So Section well, 8 typically is... Typically, workforce, workforce housing and affordable housing are just inter interchangeable terms. They, they don't have a not distinction sure. that I'm aware so. of. Why do, why do they have to be? I mean, no, do they I have to be? I don't think so. Because one so. is polarizing and, and, and political. What I people know. get up in arms over the idea of affordable housing versus workforce that's right. housing. That's why I sort of wanted to so separate can I, can I Can I try? Can I try? I think we're talking about income bans. So, um, so I think what you're saying, Laura, is there's an income ban, which we think of as sort of maybe middle class people who work in the village and who otherwise in a normal village might be able to afford to leave here, but can't in our current housing market. And so, you know, you could set rents based on those income levels. I think the village has, doesn't the village have a housing authority that Curtis yeah, runs? That's, um, that's what's his name, you know. Um, Curtis, oh, right? Gosh. I can't remember his name. Mike, do you know his name? Bonnie Cannon sits Heisman. on the board. Yeah, Curtis Heisman. Yes. Heisman. But it's not the village. So just so we're all, no, no, Curtis it's is a, it's a, a non-profit. Non no, I used to be on that board. Yeah. Yeah. And, they're, and they're really, um, they're really, thrusting towards um, affordable housing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, um, I'd like to keep it sort of. Well, could I suggest part of the reason that I, you know, have brought this up as something to look at is that you know, we, there doesn't seem to be a, a very clear path for applicants um, to maybe put one or two units of so, whatever so we call it. Into well, a, so, into so maybe we develop it in, in conjunction with uh, the Board of Trustees. Well, so what I proposed was that we bring um, a consultant on board that, you know, not to, not to, I, you know, I'm very much don't want to have yet another report for the wall that gathers dust to actually specifically look into all the um, 
things that the village and or the town have done and to pick the best um, the best solution and the easiest solution to actually produce some housing, which um, is for local teachers and, and workers, which is the goal, everyone's goal. And to make that as easy as possible. To, to, the, to, the, to your point, you know, they're doing this accessory apartment thing, which right. they passed yeah, a new law. Right, and I know and that- And they you, completely <laughs> obliterated the, the, the former law in the code and they rewrote it. And maybe it could be a subsection mm -hmm. under under that that would pertain to specifically well, workforce housing. Well, and then the old code did have a section of called workforce housing, um, but it's never really been implemented. It had to do with funding. It had to do with money. Um, but I think an opportunity here is to maybe um, Combine the accessory apartment thing with workforce housing in in a in a in a, in, in a code in the code and develop our own. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We have to obviously explore that with the people who are knowledgeable about what the law says around what we could do. And yes, but if the goal is there, I just think there's a little a lot of different initiatives. The, the accessory uh, the accessory apartment thing is to address um, family members. Um, yeah. Also, also people that work in the village that uh, maybe cannot afford a separate structure. Right, and I think um, that you know the, that's the, the intent. Do worked on that, and I think we need just to look and make sure that you know if if that's if that is um, has all the elements in it that are needed. Uh, but the law that they have lacks certain things, as I told you, Eldon. Right. So I think it needs reviewing. I really do. Yeah. Uh, is there a uh, rental permit application process that was created as part of the accessory apartment yes yes yes, yes. So we're gonna there have is to an application but it's well it's um I, I suggest you all read it i sent you all the the new no. law <laughs> mark it didn't go to you because the file was too big but um, oh, actually no i didn't see it right i, I didn't it see was it um if you go to the minutes of the board of trustees meeting on december right. 10th 2020 yeah and read so that, down. That's where it's located. And there, there, there were five points that I felt it did not address, and there probably are more. But um, it was sort of passed in the dark. I mean, I don't know why we weren't consulted at all. Well, I think there's a, a moment now to look at it and see if there's any, you know, any. Well, it it, ex it excludes all the the smaller lots which we bent over backwards with the GFA, with Hillcrest and Miller and Windward Way to be able to include them somehow or give them relief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were, this law says you have to have a property 7,500 square foot or larger. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, it has, it has flaws. I, I really, you know, I defer to you, Paul, and you, Mark, and, and you, Eldon, and, and whoever else. How about uh, me? Because I don't think it, I All don't right. think it's, I don't think it's done. <laughs> All right, well, let's, so um, staying on this one, the first agenda, which is the, um, the, the, the uh, village, the VB district and development that is coming down the pipe, um, that's gonna also be connected to the sewer district. Um, I'd like to, you know, continue to focus on just getting a proper update to that plan that we did five years ago, looking at the streets that were not addressed. And I think the main issues are what is the um, kind of general bulk of right. these buildings and any other specific guidelines. Right. Uh, and then perhaps as part of that, looking at the issue of um, workforce housing and, and is there a way to incentivize that? Right, great. Are you gonna go to AB right. for that again? No. Let's talk about that because that's my next agenda item. So my next agenda item is residential neighborhoods and community character. Um, and we, last time we met, um, we talked about revisiting that with um, Studio AB. So I did um, reach out to to Studio AB, and um, they're you know very very affordably um, available to. Uh, come meet with meet with Chris um, and review 
the recommendations that were made in 2017 um, and see uh, you know, what's happened with applications and talk to Chris about uh, giving him some time to really think about it and pull any applications um, and then report to this commission um, on what has happened transpired since 2017 with uh, the changes that were made and the changes that weren't made uh, and just and have that discussion. Um, so I, that I, uh, you know, I've, I've proposed that it's not that's not a very big ticket item. I think it would be really great to do and, and mm -hmm. important important work. Right. Good idea. Yeah, a good idea. Okay. What um, the design guys is traveling here with us? Can can't hear you. Yeah. Um, including the streets that we didn't include. We can't. We can't We're hear you, you Laura. Sorry? We now cannot we can hear you. You can't hear me? Now yeah, we can't hear you. Yeah. Okay. One other you don't want to hear me. <laughs> one other thing I wanted to bring up for regarding the residential districts is that um, and this is just very preliminary, um, but there has been some discussion afoot about um, a, an easier way to uh, bury power lines. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, I've, I've been talking to um, some consultants um, because this came up because uh, there's, there are one or two streets that have been organizing to see if mm -hmm. they can find a way to do this. And what we, what we found out was that actually um, the power authority um, is not really opposed to it. It's just they're not really set up to do it efficiently. Um, they, they will put you in touch with the subcontractors that are authorized to do this kind of work and uh, are very happy to kind of cooperate with that process. And when you contact the right people, it is actually um, quite a bit more affordable. So we were looking at a plan where it could be um, paid for, say, over a longer period of time, like 10 years, and actually mm -hmm. either build as part of your electric bill or through an electric district so that the cost could be amortized um, over a longer period and it wouldn't, it, it, you know, I, I don't know the exact number, but it was not, not, not a huge number, you know. Are you talking and, about doing it for the VB? Could be done for the VB and it could be done for residential streets where, um, you know, where the app, where the residents uh, would like that. You know, there are some streets with a lot of beautiful trees that are getting, have been getting damaged um, uh, by tree work through, you know, that has to get done for the electrical lines. Um, so it, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's both a, a village beautification issue, but I think it's also uh, what they call hardening uh, of the lines. Cause if you're near, um, you know, near the ocean, um, that's one reason why the utilities actually like it. If it's um, underground, there's obviously less, less potential for damage. Eldon, I have a quick question. Uh -huh. um, and maybe you and or, or the rest of the board could answer this, and I, I don't know the answer. Uh, a, a developer recently reached out to me regarding broadband, and my understanding of broadband and fiber optic was that they're digging, they're, they have to dig a trench for that anyhow. I wonder if there's a way that these two uh, initiatives could move forward together. Again, I don't know if they well, do, if the infrastructure is similar. That's, that's a very good point. I mean, for example, uh, there is fiber optics on Hill Street, and uh, you know, it's on the poles, and they just put in as a separate wire. If you have to add it to uh, to a trench, it's much, much, much harder. What if that? What if we did it village wide and just floated a bomb? Well, I think the beauty of this is that we're not asking the uh, village uh, finances to be involved. It could be done privately. I think that's what's kind of exciting about it. So it's not, we're not trying to reach into the taxpayers' coffers. It, it could be something done privately and um, build to the residents that kind of approve it. Um, and I think, I don't know the answer specifically, but I, I know that they put pipes in so they could have, leave room to pull, um, you know, current fiber down or future, whatever they invent in 20 years, um, you know, to leave that. To, to leave that possible. What they do for um, for gas lines, and you know, remember when they laid gas lines, and then you 
a, a whole neighborhood could connect to their homes for um, yes. a certain amount of money. You know, they did it for gas lines. They do it for for um, city water. water. The same sort of just, arrangement. I just I wonder if there's a way to like kind of dovetail the two. So if, if we're thinking of this initiative bearing these power lines, and you have some developer sniffing around for installing fiber optics out here. Well, maybe they're the ones doing, you know, putting the telephone lines uh, while they're doing it. I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, this is an area I really don't know anything about. You want to plan, you want to plan for all the, you know, all the um, utilities that you want to get down that street, even for the, for the future. Got so, it. Yeah. Um, so that is, um, Another you know initiative, and I'm you know was actively working with a couple of folks, so I you know happily report back on that because um, it seems kind of interesting. Um, so the other item on my list was um, one that we've had going for a long time, which is entitlement process um, that we've discussed many many times, and um, you know I'm still I've still been advocating that we um, and and this is not this is difficult because of Village budgets, but that we do what East Hampton has and 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 put a uh, a planner or a village architect um, role in place that could um, be doing you know working with our board, working with all the all the boards to um, review applications. Right now, they obviously get reviewed by the building department, but um, there's not an opportunity to for someone to come in and and speak about um, speak with a professional planner prior to going to the ARB or to another board um, about the application um, and also giving some more administrative support to the boards, which, you know, we're, we're lucky because we don't, in many ways, because we don't have to review individual applications, but I know speaking to members of the ARB, they're, you know, they're pretty swamped with review of these, of their applications. So they also, this person could also be, um, you know, very involved when there's municipal projects such as sewer or or new buildings, just to make sure that um, it's staying within the master plan and the and the character of what the village is trying to do. Um, but primarily, it's really about increasing um, kind of transparency and making the process work kind of better for both applicants and for the boards. So I know we've talked talked about this, you know, in 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 years past. Um, but I'd, I'd like to keep advocating for it. I don't think we have a yeah. current slot in the, any budgets. Um, I just want to see what the rest of the commission thought about that. But could that be possibly an extension of the role of the uh, architects that's uh, helping the ARB uh, used to be, uh, or the planning board? Yeah, could be an extension of that. I mean, there, yes. Uh, I think, is it Nelson Pope uh, who's uh, assisting the planning board right now? I don't remember. I think the Nelson Pope is still I still one of the consultants that's 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 referenced. Yeah, when that's reviewing that. all the applications on behalf of the board. And then there's, um, yeah, the in the ARB has a consultant as well to look at the historic um, right nature of applications. So there could be you know there is money being spent already. So maybe it's a question of looking at that that larger budget and is are we getting yes. that best uh, bang for the buck. I'm assuming you guys probably know my opinion on this. <laughs> Tell us. Well, I'm, you know, I'm a planner and yeah. um, we just, we have a very unique uh, niche in, in the uh, development process as well as we have the tools and capability to, uh, the perfect planner can obviously help the public and help the board understand what they're doing and, and, and help them move an agenda, but they, they can also write a master plan, you know, write uh, uh, addendums to it and ensure that we're, we're, we're applying these recommendations and the, and the implementation items um, over the time. Because, uh, you know, the biggest problem in for municipal um, development really is that when we write these plans, they go on a shelf and they're never looked at. And this is something we've all talked about. And as soon as I arrived, we've discussed this. You know, the planner kind of acts as a nexus that, that links the engineer, links the architect, you know, links the building develop, uh, building inspector into a comprehensive thought on how this community is supposed to develop. 
So I, I, personally, I've always thought it was shocking that we don't have one. Um, that's my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I don't think there are very many, um, you know, very many municipalities that don't have a planner or a village architect um, who is kind of, uh, you know, updating and, and helping to implement what the goals are in the master plan. And, and additionally, there's just uh, one more tangent. A great example, you know, at our town, we have current, pl current planning, long range planning. I've been kind of been tailored as an environmental planner. Um, there are grant opportunities. And of course, yes, we have someone who, who um, I'm sure Jen is probably on retainer to um, you know, apply for grants, but some of these action items, like in some of these programs like climate smart communities and clean energy communities have hundreds of thousands of dollars. And while our grant consultant can apply, we won't get them because we never, we're not participating in these other programs. For instance, clean energy community just launched last week for smaller municipalities. There might be upwards of $100,000, $150,000 of available funds um, with no match uh, for municipalities who apply, but we'd have to have someone who's forward thinking enough to realize that, okay, our streetlights need to be LED and our, um, we need to have a clean fleet. Uh, we need to um, benchmark our community. You know, an architect, an architect doesn't think like that necessarily. They're not the, you know, of course, architects are, they think differently and wonderfully. <laughs> but um, it, you know, we're, we we couldn't even participate in this program, um, or we can, but we're we're starting, we're lagging behind. Would a planner be able to facilitate? Would be able to facilitate that? Recommend recommend those grants for certain things that they that the planning that their plan called for absolutely and like for at least at the town level something i did was the climate smart community program so i you know i logged all the things that we had accomplished as a municipality i acted as that nexus to understand what has what occurred in parks what occurred in buildings and submitted it to the state we became a certified community now four years later there's a new program called clean energy communities and they say well, if you're a climate smart community, you get 800 points. And if you can get 5,000 points, then you're eligible for hundreds of thousands of dollars in funding. In this case, I think for smaller municipalities, it's less. It might be like $100,000. Um, but yeah, yeah, a planner theoretically would do all those things. It just kind of depends, so, of course, on so if we had what a we planner, want them to do. So if we had a planner or hired a planner or hired you or whatever, uh, we could do this. And I know that the Biden government wants everything to go go green and clean um so well, there might be I just a lot want to of money one, out there. i want to clarify one thing i'm not the kind of planner you would want and and i you know i don't want i'm not self-advocating <laughs> here because i'm on i i'm not well-rounded enough i'm really heavy on, on what i just described and master plans and comprehensive plans but i'm not really i've never really interacted with the public but other planners have where they've done both where they've interacted with the public and they have someone who wants to you know, do a commercial development and that planner directs them and utilizes the code in order to best pursue their objectives. Uh, you know, you need, you need someone who's a little bit more well-rounded. Is it a sort of a consultantship thing type of thing? Or is it, you know, it's not a, it's not a- We lost her. Lost her. It's all right, you get close to the microphone or something. You, you keep on losing it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to hear it. No, again- No, we want to hear you, we want to hear you. Um, but do you know of such a person, Mike? Well, I think we'd have yeah, to there's, do there's lots of people. I think, you know, at Laura, the process would be that we have to define what the job might be and get, you know, get the totally. trustees, um, see if they can fit it within a budget. Um, and assuming yeah, I mean, those items. Well, we, I would emphasize uh, the green and clean stuff for sure as yeah. a prerequisite. And Water quality, like these are all in yeah, someone's all of purview, it. but of and maybe e we, maybe even have grant writing ability. So, you know, I'm I love some support if uh, to you know continue to talk to the trustees and maybe I might go um, at some point to one of their meetings and to see if if this is something we could gain some support for. And I guess we should probably write up some more specifics around what. You know what this might how this might benefit the village and maybe even pay for itself um 
through some of the support and grants. Well, we could do an RFP and RFQ. Well, yeah, we first have to see if, you know, if we have if we have support. First, yeah, maybe Mike could do a, an outline um, for what we're looking for. You seem to have a lot of experience with this. I think I would be able to do um, a very solid outline for half of what this planner could theoretically pursue. Um, the, the first, the, the other half, I'd have to do a little research because, like I said, we're just on the town level, current planning versus long range planning. I might be, in, I'm in the background helping draft the code, the zoning code. The current planner is implementing it. I've never implemented code. I've never, you know, like those are just, they're very different jobs, although, and it, it might be difficult for one person to have to have so many roles, but perhaps on a village level, it's doable because we're, we, we're smaller. So, um, I wanted to move it along to see if there were any other general um, comments, and I have one item we have to kind of we have to approve. But um, apart from the three agenda items that I brought up, is are there any other um, uh, items for discussion this this month? No, I think are, are you all going to review this new law about the yeah, exactly. uh, accessory apartment accessory apartments? I think we should put it on the on the agenda for our next month meeting to discuss it. Okay. I have your notes, Laura, and I'll I'll read it more carefully. Okay. And also um, the um, the Southampton Inn uh, proposal. Should we look at that anymore or not? Um, I think I have to inquire, like, what our role would even be. You know, how we can, how we can look at that. I, I you know, but I think you came to us first. Right, I guess it's more, you know, whether I'm not sure. We have to find out what our what our role technically could be because it's an application. We don't normally look at specific applications. Right. See, I thought I think that maybe a good idea would be that for lots above a certain size within the village business district, there may be some addition more freedom in terms of the zoning or the guidelines. That for only for lots of a certain size that that would have. A, a special impact on the village that maybe that will include the streets that were excluded in the 2017. I don't think we want yes. to add a lot more complexity to the zoning as it is. I think you know the idea was just to put some. It's relatively easy. I think the build two line was, you know, was one that we did, um, and it was just making sure that those guidelines are applied to the whole VB district. Yeah, and name them then. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I would pursue also, this. I would pursue this planning thing. Yeah, this I think planning would, person. I think it would be great. So, um, I am remiss because I was supposed to have um, uh, passed a uh, motion to approve the December uh, meeting notes. I was told to do. Um, do I have a second? No I'll second. second. Oh. And, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we've, we've approved the uh, <laughs> December meeting notes. Thank you. Uh, and um, are there any other uh, people in the audience, any other comments for this uh, meeting or any other yeah. comments from, from the commissioners? There's no attendees looking to comment now. So sad. Okay. <laughs> Eldon, are we having a meeting on the seventh? No. No. This okay. I got time. really confused. Yeah. We will make sure that we um, look at everyone's emails because I didn't get this email notification either. So um, I'm going to make sure we check through everyone's emails and make sure we're getting the right notifications. Okay. So there isn't one on the seventh. No, okay. there's one. The first, it's the first Thursday of every month, as always. No, I know. But, but the thing you sent out said the seventh. No, oh. I'm sorry. You're wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Oh, well, it was we'll, January we'll, 7th. Beg your pardon. <laughs> we will check into uh, into all that. Make sure we get the right emails. Um, <laughs> anyway, there's some. I think there's some exciting, you know, exciting things going on. I, you know, would love to get um, Glennis back to, to talk about the residential areas, and I'd like to love to keep pushing for this VB district and you know anticipating 
what may happen down down the road. I have a question, just a general question about how you all feel about something. The um, the heart of the Hamptons, you know, the the social service thing that's with the the Catholic Church on Hill Street, you know, yes, the yes. food, and they want to move to the ambulance barn, the old ambulance yes. barn on meeting. Is it meeting house? Meeting house. Meeting house land. Yes, right across from my apartment. <laughs> so this is a very small street. Apparently, what's happening with this food bank is that the trucks are going in and out all the time delivering food and then people come all the time and pick up food um I, the que my question is is that the location doesn't afford really easy access for trucks the parking lot is shared with the presbyterian church and the historical museum across the street and it's a very small, narrow street and, and was proper outreach done with all of the neighbors around there that they're all on board with this, that this is no, fine? I, I, I think contrary, I think the neighbors are very much in oppos opposing the this idea. I also thought that it was very strange to locate uh, this operation right in uh, at that location. It's uh, it's not suitable at all. There There is, it's not suitable for the, for the, population that they are servicing it's not it's not uh suitable for the suppliers it's not i don't understand why uh to do it at that location i understand that the, the church wants them to relocate from hill street but i think there are many many other uh, uh, sites that would be much much more appropriate the whole North Sea corridor it, it, coming in to the village. I mean, isn't there's exactly. <laughs> it seems well, to be was... working with the COVID though, with the COVID vaccination, because I see it out my window every time they're doing it. It, it, it seems like there's a general, they can't ha pass, possibly be having that much traffic in comparison to what it's currently being utilized for. Well, how is that affecting you? You living across the street? I mean, it, it really doesn't. It, uh, it's like, all the, at time, you know, when it, it was peak and there, there might have been 20 cars in a line, they had officers there coordinating traffic. But it, I don't, it, also like the, the time of day or the, the usage doesn't seem to impact my day because, or perhaps even traffic, because the majority of traffic is based around or through traffic uh, on this road is based around the tree parade. So it's in the morning and the evening. So it's, you know, that, that building is utilized cars. kind of midday. But you're talking about cars, not trucks. Cars, correct. Yes. I don't know. I don't know what the situation would be with trucks. And if it's a box truck, if it's a box truck, depending on the yeah, size. I mean, if sure. it's a smaller truck, right. Well, I know that yeah, Tom the, Edmonds and uh, the pastor of the Grace Church, they're very, very much in favor of this. Are they? Yeah. From what I understand. Oh, that wins me over. <laughs> it, well, but I, my my whole thing is, was proper outreach done to the neighborhood where this thing is going to be? I don't. You absolutely. It's a great question. It's a question. Yeah. It's a great question. I what think. What was that, the no, feedback? And I don't think I mean, so. It didn't come before. Obviously, no, it didn't come for us. Yeah. I know that. Right, I thought that. Ask, you might ask I, Jesse or Joe Elvin yeah. about that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a good idea at all. I, I, th there was a site that had been proposed for the heart of the Hamptons, I think, up in the Major's Path, where there used to be a child care center. Oh, on right, Major's that Path. little building, right? Yes, uh -huh. and and I thought this was ideal for it. This was a great little See? building for it. Well, my understanding the is that the thing... people that are picking up food, they really don't want to be observed. Exactly. Know? They have their exactly. privacy. Exactly. I would like to make uh, one comment on this, I guess. I, I don't, I think midday, it, I'm assuming this is when it's most active. Um, the parking lot is empty the majority of the time. And there's, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> um, not in the summer, Mike. Not in the summer. Oh, that could, not, yeah, that could be true. I, so I would, I would be curious to, to, I, 
first identify our issues with it. If the issue is the trucks, well, then that can be resolved by asking those who are be delivering. And then the second issue would be if the issue is the, the neighbors, well, at least north of, of Meeting House, excuse me, of uh, yeah, Meeting House Lane, uh, you have a commercial use, a museum, and a, a mix, uh, excuse me, uh, um, like all, all, I guess like mixed use housing or I'm looking at it now, but like, you know, it's kind of like apartment law office, in these law homes. There. Yeah. yeah, law office, Burke, my landlord, he's so wonderful to me. Um, uh, I, I don't know. It, south, though, they're bordered by a large fence and 40 foot trees. Yeah, so it, it, it might, might not be an issue, but it, just I'm, legally, I'm, just, I'm giving you my observation. I don't have an right, opinion. But just legally, it shouldn't outreach have been done to the neighbors. I mean, really? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Shouldn't it? I'm certainly happy to, to just ask what the process was, but I think the decision was, you know, has been made. So, uh, has uh, it been made? Has it been finalized? I, I don't know. I certainly I can inquire and, and report back to you guys. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so, I wanted to move on and see if there were any other topics. Otherwise, um, I was going to move to adjourn the meeting. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think there was just as one other topic yet. that we did. Yep. <laughs> the, the clean energy community program that I mentioned before regarding the planning, um, yep. the, regarding the planner, I wanted to actually mention that before we even had that conversation, but it, it is something we should look at. And I don't know, maybe it is something that Jen Messiano, she, she is our grant consultant, right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah but she's a consultant, right, exactly. Yeah. Right. So maybe if you I, yeah. mind shooting an email and I'll make sure I forward it to, um, our trustee connection and the and the grant writer and we'll get an answer well, as to whether we can apply for that I, I have a meeting a with jen um, right. I, I have a meeting with jen about this uh for the town but so i'll, I'll i could mention something to jen when i see her perfect. i think next week perfect we do look for a planner maybe one of the requirements or one of the suggestions would be that they know how to write grants i mean why not combine them Okay. That's no, I, think that I think grant writing is a, is an art in itself. Yeah. Well, it yeah. isn't really. You we, have to follow a format. It's really. I've, we, I've, yeah, you're, you're correct. It, it it is. There is a format to it. We assist Jen, which I think lowers the, the what we're being filled. You know, she brings us in, and at times two or three of us, depending on the size of like the million dollar grant we got for the uh, Kenta Bay's bike uh, park to park bike route you know that was all hands on deck jen me dave wilcox and we were able to janice share and we were able to submit it um so she coordinate she would coordinate with a planner dave wilcox janice and me are three planners um well let us so. know if, if and if you want me to um you know contact anyone and, and, and let, let 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 me know mike but if you you got it perfect okay all right everyone yeah. um Thank you very much. It Thank you. Thank you. Uh, adjourn the February 4th meeting. Uh, I look forward to speaking to you um, uh, next month.